Let's take a look at this question. You may pause the video to read the question. We are given that the lake is bounded by the equations as shown. With PQ, normal both P and Q. The question requires us to prove these highlighted equations. Starting with part A, we need to show u cubed minus 2u squared plus u minus 2 ln u equals 0, where u appears in the coordinates of q. The question tells us that pq is a normal line at p and q. This means that if m1 is a gradient of y equals to e power x at p and m2 is a gradient of line pq then m1 times m2 equals to negative 1. Similarly, if m3 is a gradient of y equals to half brackets x squared minus 1 at q then m2 times m3 equals to negative 1. Now m1 can be computed by finding the dy dx for the curve y equals to e power x. The coordinates of phi are t and e power t. So x equals to t. Differentiating e power x, we get e power x. Substituting x equals to t, we get e power t. So this is the gradient at point p, m1. To find m2, since the product is negative 1, m2 is equal to negative 1 over e power t. Similarly, m3 can be computed by differentiating the function y equals to half brackets x squared minus 1. And the coordinates of q are u comma half u squared minus 1. So x equals to u. Differentiating half x squared minus 1, we get x. So substituting x equals to u, m3 equals u. Since m2 times m3 equals to negative 1, m2 equals to minus 1 over u. Now we have found two ways of expressing m2. Equating them, we find negative 1 over e power t equals to negative 1 over u. Therefore, we have the relation e power t equals to u. Or in other words, t equals to ln u. Now the equation of the normal line at q passes through the point q and has gradient negative 1 over u. To get the straight line equation of pq, we use this formula where x0 and y0 is the point q and m2 is a gradient of pq. So we have since the point p also lies on this line pq, we can substitute the coordinates of p into this equation. Now our earlier result shows us that e power t equals to u and t equals to ln u. Therefore, x equals to t equals to ln u and y equals to e power t equals to u. Substituting these values into the above equation, we get cross multiply and simplify 
we obtain the required equation. We're done with part A. Part B tells us that u equals to 1. So we're able to find the exact coordinate values of P and Q. And we're asked to show this equality. When u equals to 1, Q becomes the point 1, 0 by substituting U value and P becomes 0, 1. Now the given diagram does not show P and Q in the correct positions. This is a better illustration of the correct positions of P and Q. Now we are ready to consider the areas A1 and A2. Let's consider the area A1. On closer look, A1 consists of the yellow area plus the blue area plus the pink area. The yellow area is given by the endpoints from negative 1 to 0 under the curve y is of ex. This represents the area for the yellow region. Next, to find the area of the pink region, we take the endpoint from negative 1 to 1 of the function half brackets x squared minus 1. Because this area is below the x-axis, it will be computed, it will be negative. So to find the absolute value of this area, we need to change this to negative of integral. To find the blue area, notice that it's actually a right angle triangle with the base unit 1 and height 1. So the area of the triangle OPQ is half base which is 1 times height which is 1. Evaluating these integrals and combining them we get the value of A1. Similarly, we can find the area of A2. On closer look, A2 is a combination of the green area plus the white area. The green area is given by the area under the curve y equals to ex above the x-axis from 0 to 1 minus the triangle area of OP cubed. And the area of the white region is given by the area under y equal to ex minus the area under y equals half plus x squared minus 1 with the endpoints 1 to 2. Again, evaluating the combination of these integrals, we get Therefore, we conclude that 
the ratio a1 over a2 is equal to 13 over 6 minus e to the power negative 1 divided by e squared minus 13 over 6 multiplying numerator and denominator by 6 we get 13 minus 6 e to the power negative 1 over 6 to the power e squared minus 13. This is exactly the ratio that is required of us.